can we pray for the word of God? Father, we are grateful for this opportunity that, Lord, you've given us to be able to come in your presence to share the word that, Lord, you've given us this morning. Thank you for your people who have left their homes. And I believe they never left their homes for any other reason but to meet you, to fellowship with you, and to serve you. And we are here in this house. We have given you our praise. We have given you our worship. We have done it because the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We have done it because the Bible says, worship the Lord with your heart. And now it's time for you to speak to us for the next few minutes. Let nobody leave this place disappointed. But let everyone go out of this house encouraged. So I pray, bless your word. Bless the giver. Allow me to speak that which comes from you. Give me utterance and give me also the wisdom to speak the word of God to your people. And bless the hearers of the same, that they may receive it as a word from you. We thank you and we bless you. We simply submit ourselves to you and to your will. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe and together we say amen. And be seated in the presence of God. Now, this morning, I want to acknowledge the presence of, of a few people who are here. And I'll have them come towards the end of the service just to give us a short greeting. Bishop Leonard Mulandi, who is uh, with us. We are grateful for you being here with Mama. He's the bishop of the full gospel churches of Kenya churches in, in Sultan Hamoud. And uh, his children attend our church. We are so grateful that you could come to be with us. I'm sure many of you know our sister Miriam. She serves in the Sunday school. And our brother Robert, we are very thankful that uh, you can allow them to come and be with us. And also we are glad to have uh, Pastor Joshua all the way from our Sabbath. Again, thank you for joining us in this service. <laughs> all right. So let's go into a portion of scripture. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 4. We've been talking about favor that brings good success. I don't know how many have been with me in the last few, series, few, few Sundays. That, can I see how many have been following this message? Okay, so I'm talking to the right congregation. Today, I want to move a little further and talk about how favor grants us good success. So my point here is favor that grants good success. Favor that grants good success. Proverbs 3, 4, it says, So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. That's the scripture we've been running with. And we began by the word that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And when you do that, obey his commandments, follow his deeds. You know, don't lean on your own understanding. Allow him to direct your paths. The Bible says you will find favor in the sight of God and in the sight of other people. And we've been looking at the life of Jacob. Last Sunday, we ended where Jacob has gone from his brother, running away from his brother, as it were. And indeed, with the blessings of his father. And this man has reached a place where he has had an encounter with God. Right in the middle of his journey, he has had a dream. And in that dream, he has seen heaven open. And he has seen God come down, standing, I mean, coming down through his angels to minister to him. And the Lord himself standing at the top of that uh, ladder and giving him a promise. And the promise was very simple. I will take care of you. He didn't know where he was going. He had no idea what was going to happen to him. But God tells Jacob, I will be with you, I will keep you where you are going, and I will bring you back to this land where you are actually, you are standing on. And what does Jacob do when that happens? He acknowledges that favor that God had given to him. He acknowledges that God has simply favored him, and he gives him a promise by saying, Lord, if you will do what you have spoken to me today, I will give you a tenth of everything that you will give to me. I think that was the beginning of the principle of tithing. Where Jacob, in his own wisdom, understood that God is the giver of all things. He knew that God would take care of him where he was going. And he understood that if God will not provide for him, then there will be nothing which he will, be, he will gain where he was going to. Then he tells God, if you will keep me and you will bless me, I will give you a full tithe, a full tenth of everything that you have given to me. That was where we ended last Sunday. And today I want us to just move a little further just a little further, and see what happens to this man when he now gets to the land of Haran, the place that he was running to. That is the place of Laban in Pad Padam Ra Raim. What happens to Jacob when he gets there? And uh, as I said the other Sunday, is that this man, when he was running away, 
it was not easy for him. Because there were two, he, he had actually two things that he was doing as he was running away. Number one, he was running away from his brother to make sure that when his father is dead and when his brother has been appeased, the word appeased here, his brother has forgotten about the mistake or the sin he committed against him, taking away his birthright. When his brother has put it behind his back, then this man will come back to the place of Abraham, the place of Isaac, and he will inherit that land. That was point number one. And then the second thing that he was doing, he was running away from his brother because his father had requested him to go and marry a woman in his father's house. That is the son, I mean the daughter of Laban, I mean the daughter of Laban, that brother to Rebekah who was actually his mother. So those were the two agendas that he was running with. And as we've been sharing, I believe Jacob did not really know what, where he was going. It was very hard for him. I'm looking at Jacob going to a land he doesn't know, to a people he doesn't know. He's going to a place where he has no idea how the future will be. And indeed, the message from the father is go and marry. I wonder if you were Jacob, what you would have done, what state you would be in. So we see Jacob now he has arrived in the land of Haran. And what happens when he arrives there? We want to look at the favor that God gave him. And that favor was simply God gave him good success in that land. Good success. And how did this start? This starts when this man arrives in the land of Haran. And when he reaches there, he has this man called Laban receiving him in his own home. Now follow with me. Receiving him in his own home. The first thing which this man doesn't do when he arrives there, he does not propose to Rachel or to the woman that he was supposed to marry. And I'll tell you the reason why. The man knew if he proposes to Rachel, if he proposes to Leah, whether it was going to be, the next thing would be the father would give her to him and he would tell him, now go back from the place where you have come from. And I'll remind you the story of Rebekah and Isaac. When Abraham sent his servant to go and get Rebekah for his son Isaac. It never took a week. It simply took a day. When they arrived there, a day after arriving there, the girl was given. But the, the, but, but the father had to beg them, stay with us for a few more days so that the girl can organize herself to live and come with you. So this was a scenario which I believe uh, Isaac was expecting from Jacob. He was expecting Jacob would go there. After he has reached there, he would be given his bride. And this man would just go back the way he had done or the way it had been done for him. But look at what happens. When Jacob arrives in that land, he is not quick to propose. And the question is, why was he not quick to propose? I think the answer is obvious. The man was doing what? Buying time. He was buying time. Because he knew the real agenda of his going to that land was for him to stay in that land until his father is dead and until his brother has been appeased. And then he will leave that land and come back to his brother. And he didn't know how long that will be. So the man sits there and continues. In fact, the Bible tells me the moment he got there, he began to work for Laban. The Bible says you will find favor. So it doesn't matter where you are and where you are running to. Doesn't matter what the agenda may be in your life. When God has favor with you, believe me, when God has favor with you, he'll, he'll send that favor to men. And men also will favor you. So this man is just waiting upon God. The promise has been given in the wilderness. When he, was, he met the angel, I will be with you. And he has affirmed it by saying, if you will be with me, I will bless you, God. I will give it back to you. So as he's, as he's in the land of Haran, he decides to wait upon God. And I was saying in the, second, in the first service, one of the things which many of us don't appreciate is the spirit of patience. The spirit of patience. We are too quick to do things. I'm imagining if he had been just too quick to say, I came to marry, can I have the girl? And I go away with it. It would have been very difficult for him. So the man says, I'll, I'll wait upon God and I'll see what God will do for me. And what does God do? One month of serving Laban. It took Laban to provoke him. To ask him, you've been with me here for one month. And I have, by experience, seen this one month, I have seen the blessings of God upon me. By the way, when the favor of God is upon you, good success begins to follow you. So it began exactly at that point. When he began to put his hand on the things which Laban had. The animals and the flock that Laban had. The, 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 the goods, which, the people whom Laban had. So Laban had to turn to him and tell him, look, you've been with me here for a whole one month. Now, you cannot continue being with me for one month without me paying you. So Laban made a proposal. He says, can I know what are your wages? 
And you'll find this in the book of Genesis chapter 29, beginning from verse 13. And I believe, Nidia, you have those scriptures, 13 to 18. Now, this was an opportunity for this man, I, uh, uh, Jacob, now to begin experiencing what favor can do in the life of a person who has the favor of God. He, he could not propose. I always used to believe and used to think it was him that made the proposal. You know, there are times when we read the Bible, we don't see the details in the scriptures. So I thought it was Jacob who made the proposal. But when I, I, I looked at verse 29 and verse, verse 13, if we can turn to chapter 29, verse 13. Can you just go there, media, on the screen? Pro, uh, uh, Genesis 39, I mean 29 and verse 13. It says, and G, that 29 and verse 13. And as soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all the things, of course, what he, his agenda was. Then verse 13, verse 14, and Laban said to him, surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for how long? One month. After one month, please look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, and Laban said, then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? I want to believe that one month that he had been with him, Laban had seen what God had done in his life because of this man, Jacob. And we shall see that as we move on. So he made a proposal. He told him, tell me what shall be your wages. Now, I'm sure this man would have simply said, pay me giving, by giving me your daughter and I go away. It would have been simple. And in most cases, who proposes? When you go to a, a home, you want a girl. Who makes the proposal for the girl? Who makes the proposal? Is the man. Isn't it? The person who wants the girl. And who now tells you what you should pay? Is it the father or you? Is the father. It is, I, I, I'm married. I, I know all of you, you are married. In fact, one of the, the greatest things you fear when you are going to, the, to your in-law is how much you'll be asked to pay. Isn't it? And sometimes some of us negotiate. We negotiate with the girl on the side. And we tell her, make sure you talk to your dad silently. Tell him this is what we are going to pay. When the uncles are making noise, your dad should just be quiet. Then when it is done, say it is okay. But look at this. The moment the man asked him, what will I give you as your wages? The mind of this gentleman quickly went to Rachel, who was a daughter in that home. And the man quickly made a proposal. And, and, and also went further and suggested what he's going to pay to have Rachel. He never gave Laban an opportunity for Laban himself to say, you will give me this much. And I can tell you, I was reading a commentary somewhere, and he told me the man actually paid more than what was enough for this young girl. The man paid dowry, which would have paid for seven brides. Because what, what proposal did he make? Let's look at the proposal. You will see the proposal in the following scripture. Which scripture are we at? Scripture number what? Number 15. Is it 16? Then Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. The name of the younger was Rachel. In verse 17, it says, Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in the form of appearance. So there were two girls there. Moja, macho, moja, naka, huku, nengine, naka, pandehi. You can see, you can imagine how she was looking like. Lakini huyu mwingine, ukimuangalia ni msafi. I don't know, this home where, where, where Abraham came from had very beautiful girls. Beautiful. Rachel was very beautiful. Re Re Rebecca was very beautiful. And then there was this uh, Rachel... Sarah was also very beautiful. Now, here it says, one was weak. Rachel was beautiful in the form of appearance. But verse 7, 18 is my verse. It says, Jacob loved Rachel. And he said, so immediately the father told him, what can I pay you for serving me here? The man quickly said, I will serve you. How many years? Seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Now, the question I'm asking myself, why did he propose seven years? Please help me. What did you propose seven years? Buying time. The idea wasn't, oh, I want to, to uh, quickly to marry the girl. No. The idea was maybe after seven years, my, brother will be de my, my father will be dead. Maybe after seven years, Esau will be missing me. And after seven years, I can carry this woman with me into the land with me and inherit the promise. So the man was actually buying time. He proposed a heavy dowry payment. 
Simply for him to get a time, for, I mean for him to buy time, until the time the seven years are over, he will now carry his young bride with him and go and tell the father, I have now brought, I mean, go and tell the mother, I have now brought my new bride. To signify to me, even in moments of crisis, God will always give you an opportunity to express the desire of your heart. Amen. You didn't get my point. Favor will always open doors for you. For you to be able now to be the one who determines what is going to happen in your life? The young man is leaving home. He doesn't know what is going. He doesn't know whether Laban will tell him tomorrow leave. But he says, "Listen, Laban, I am now ready to work for you, and I'll work for you for seven good years. And these seven years, I'll do nothing but wait for your younger daughter, Rachel, for me to marry her. But now, listen. Even after the seven years were over, we'll talk about that. Laban did something very, very interesting. So he he made that proposal to." To indicate to me, to indicate to me that this man Jacob was simply buying time. So that he can be able to fulfill agenda number two, which was the, not the main agenda. To, you know, to fulfill agenda number one, which was the main agenda. And that agenda number one was for him to stay away. Akai ukombali. Paka babayaka fariki. Now, number two. Laban cheats this young man. And you know, on the day of the wedding... What happened on the day of the wedding? The young man gets, wakes up in the morning, and when she looks at the bride, she sees something different. She sees the woman with the eyes on the other side. Okay? And then he wakes up and he goes to the father-in-law and tells him, why have you done this to me? The father-in-law tells him, listen, I, in our tradition, we don't wed the, first, the, the, the second girl before we wed the first one. So he gives him now, he gives him now another proposal. He says, now for you to get that one, I'm adding you another how many years? Seven years. I think some of you think Jacob was very mad at that. But Jacob wasn't mad. Jacob says, yeah. Because of what? Seven more years, even now he has got an extension of time. It means now I have all my sweet time here. I'm going to stay here for another almost 14 years working for this, for this girl. And as I stay for 14 years, I will be buying time for me, when I, for me to go home when my brother is already missing me. So for those 14 years, the man now became a worker in the, guard, in, 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 in the field of this gentleman called Laban. Now the point which I want to bring to your attention here is this. Favor will always open doors for you, even where doors don't seem to be open. That's what favor will do. Favor will come before you and fulfill the desires of your heart. There could be things in your life which seem so difficult. When you look at yourself, you wonder, how will I be able to make it? But sometimes we may not be able to know. God is simply giving us an opportunity for us to, uh, to know him and to live for him and to serve him so that he can have time for him to show his favor in our lives. It took this man 14 good years for him to fulfill what was the desire of, ha of his heart to marry this woman that was called Rachel. And I've come to discover that favor, when God gives you favor, it may not, it may not matter how long it takes for you to see the promise. It, it doesn't matter. There are moments when sometimes in your life you see as though God has denied you something. Like here, it may have appeared, Laban has conned who? Jacob. But he had not conned him. God, is, is the Lord who was walking in it. You will, you will see when we'll be looking at another scripture that says, and I will direct your paths. God will always walk you in paths which you do not know. And he will make sure that he straightens th those paths. So that the end result will be what you are believing God for and what you are trusting God for. I don't know how many of us have some, one time or another in your life felt like God is delaying you in the area of what you've been trusting God for. I gave an example this morning and I said, when I got employed myself, that time we, we, had, we had KRA in the Ministry of Finance. I was employed in the Customs Department, Kenya Revenue Authority. I mean, I'm in Ministry of Finance then. Today we call it Kenya Revenue Authority. And it took me 10 years before I was promoted. I don't know how many of you I've gone through that type of an experience. Where you are trusting God for something in a short time and it's not happening for you. Ten good years, I was not promoted. I joined as a, a, a senior collector. Ten years, my friends whom we joined with, they become principal collectors. Others become assistant commissioners. And I'm just sitting there. And the reason was very simple. Because I'm a pastor. I'm sure many of you know what KRA does. Especially customs. You know what they do? They collect what? Money? From what? From goods. So I want you to imagine Mulema negotiating with a customer 
to give me a cut. Because what would happen is this. Even our bosses, let me be honest. Corruption didn't begin today. In Kenya, corruption began a long time. It is actually a cancer. Where your boss would promote you and tell you every evening you pass through my office. When you are sitting at the customs and you are, collect, you are collecting revenue, half of that revenue passed through my office and gave it to me. And therefore you buy your promotion. And I saw my, 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 my colleagues moving. I saw them being promoted. I stayed for seven years without a car. And all my colleagues a year into their employment, they are driving. They are changing cars every day. I lived in a place where all the bosses lived, those who know my Wednesday Gardens. I, that was the senior quarters. Seven years, I, I'm walking and I'm trekking on foot between, between the, the upper hill and the city center. Until one boss asked me, one of them says, Kenusu, utakufa maskini. <laughs> but what was I doing? I was guarding my testimony. I, I was a pastor. I began this church in 1991. I began serving in, 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 in the gum in 1985. What was I going to do? Mortgage my faith? I'm preaching to them every day. Can I again get into corruption and begin bribing them and begin doing all those things? I told God, God, I will never allow that to happen. But believe me, when the favor of God came upon me, and I will tell you, when the favor of God came upon me, I remember very clearly, during that time we had a big audit query that came in one of the departments. Actually, the oils, the mafuta, where we do fuels. And they were looking for somebody who can go and look at that, that query and find a way of solving that query. And at that time, we used to have what we used to say called dry places and uh, wet places. Wet is where there is money. So me, for 10 years, I was in a dry place where you only see papers. You don't see anything. They said, can we find somebody who can go there in that dry place and, and solve that query? And by God's grace, they appointed me. I went. For two years, I was there looking, looking at those queries. And by God's grace, I managed to do that work and bring it to a conclusion. Then suddenly, the commissioner then, assistant, the deputy commissioner, said, this man, we must move him from here and take him to another good place. He thought I was a Mkamba because of my name, Kinusu. He didn't know whether Kinusu was from wherever. So he said, we are removing this man. He was a Mkamba. We are taking him there. And from that day, my fortunes changed. I was now taken to a place where I would meet people. I would communicate with them. It didn't take long. I was at the airport here, as the deputy at the airport here. It didn't take long I was at the headquarters as the assistant to the commissioner there. And I had what we are calling as a hop, step, and jump promotion. You remember hop, step, and jump? Where you do what you hop. Is it you used to hop like that? And then you step, and then you jump. From a senior collector, I jumped principal collector. I hopped and jumped to principal collector. And from here, in a few years, I was assistant commissioner of customs. And I said, I'm going to resign my job in a very good position where everybody will know I'm not resigning because I am frustrated. I'm resigning because God has called me to ministry. <laughs> and listen to me. This man, Jacob, for 14 years, I'm going to my message now. 14 years, this man was serving to have Rachel. But believe me, this 14 years, he's not only serving to have Rachel. This man is serving to fulfill the promise that Abraham had given to him or Isaac has, had given to him. And he's simply buying time. He's saying it doesn't matter. Even if I'm going to work for 14 years, God has promised me he will be with me. And God has promised me he'll take care of me. And he has spoken to me and told me he will take me to the land which he promised my fathers. That was the faith which this man had. And I want to encourage you, listen. When the favor of God is upon you, it may not be instant. Listen to me. The things you are trusting God for may not come on you instantly. Because we are living in a, season, in a season where people want instant things. Today we are living at a time when everything is on spot. But I can assure you, God does not work like that. You look at men in the Bible, there was always the element of patience. Faith always moves with what? Patience. It moves with patience. It moves with Abraham had to wait. Even Isaac had to wait. Rebecca had to wait. Sarah had to wait. And I can tell you there was no way he was going to fulfill the promise in this man called Jacob without teaching him that what patience and waiting is all about. And I'm telling you as a believer this morning, it may appear like the, the, the future looks so blim. You look at the future, you begin to ask, can I really make it in life? When the promise of God and the favor of God is upon you, it may take long, but I promise you, the Lord will fulfill it. The Lord will fulfill it. So, 
Favor now begins to work in the life of this man called Jacob. 14 years, he is serving Laban. At the end of 14 years, the man now has, is marrying Rachel. And as soon as he married Rachel, listen, he has married Rachel. Rachel gave birth to the last born son who was called Joseph then. There were 11 of them. Benjamin was not born. Joseph. Then the eyes of Jacob opens and he says, it's now more than 14 years. He's saying, now, what do I do with this family that God has given to me? What do I do with myself? And at this point, as I'm speaking, this man has never earned even a single man, a single shilling from his servant Laban. You know, people think when he was serving Laban, he was receiving a salary. No. Up to this point, the man has nothing for himself. To encourage you to tell you, you may be serving in that company. And you may not earn anything in that company. Just remain faithful. No, you didn't hear me. Am I trying to convince somebody here? Just remain faithful. Listen, there are times when we serve our bosses and we don't seem to be receiving anything from them. But I can assure you, if God is with you, the 14 years that you have served, they will be given to you in six years. Can I repeat? The 14 years that you have served without a promotion, God will reward you in a period of less than six years. Because that's what he did to Jacob here. 14 years, the man is serving Laban. He's not receiving a cent. He is only serving him to get a wife. And as he's getting a wife, he's producing children. You know? You know people who don't uh, get anything. Who, who, people, some of us who have nothing to gain from anything. The only thing we do is to have children. You can serve your boss. You, you, you toil the whole day. When you reach home, the only thing you are taught. So the man has 11 children, 11, but he has nothing of his own. So he turns to Laban and tells Laban, listen, I've been with you for 11 years, I mean, I mean 14 years, and now I must leave and go with my family. Because I'm sure this pressure was not only coming from himself, this pressure was coming also from his wife and his, and, and, and his children. How can I be living in your home, serving you for 14 years? I have 11 children in that home, and I don't own anything of my own. So the man says, no, I'll go to Laban and tell him to release me now and go back. It doesn't matter how home is. He has no idea whether the brother is there or the father is there, but I'll just go back home. And now see where favor begins to come. I'm going to talk about that and I'll end. Are you, are you still with me? Favor now begins to, to be expressed here. Genesis chapter 30 from verse 30, 27 to verse number 30. I have 10 minutes. I'll share this and I'll close at that. Now, if you go to chapter 30, Genesis, and verse 30, see what Jacob tells Laban. Let's go first to verse 30. We'll come back to verse 27. Verse 30 says, For you had little before I came. He's telling Laban. You had little before I came. And it has increased abundantly. The Lord has blessed you wherever I turned. But now, when shall I provide for my own household also? You know, people of God... And listen to this. When the favor of God is upon you, everything you touch is blessed. You know the problem we have? We don't want to make other people rich. That's a problem we have. Especially Africans. An African never wants to make another African happy. I, I, move even to wherever level. Come to our level of the, the nation. Come to the level of our tribes. Come to the level of our families. Even within families, I don't want to make my brother rich. But you as a believer, listen. If God is with you, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Even when you are serving that Muhindi boss, serve him with the whole of your heart. Amen. I know an amen will not come in that one. <laughs> Hello, can I say that again? Even if you are serving that Muhindi boss that doesn't seem to know what is happening in your life, serve him with the whole of your heart. Because you don't know. That, that wealth which the Muhindi has can easily be transferred to you. You don't know. It can. And that's the way God works. We must serve this nation with the whole of our hearts. Even when things don't seem to be working, serve the nation with the whole of your heart. This man Jacob served this man with the whole of his heart. 14 good years he's serving him. 
I can say maybe now six, 15 or 16 here. Because now uh, 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 Joseph, Joseph has been born. So he says, when shall I have time to provide for my own family? I'm imagining pressure coming from the wives. Telling him, listen, if it were... You know, many of us men, when we go home and you have seen your, your fellows are being, are being promoted, your friends are buying cars, and everybody's building a house in Nairobi, wives, how do wives feel when you are in the company of those men and you, nothing is happening in your life? Wives will not say anything now, but men, how do wives feel? I think some of, some of us, we are given questions which we, don't, we cannot even answer. Angalia jirani amenunua. Angalia mwenzako amepanda. Angalia hii mefanyika. And then you begin wondering what is wrong with me. But listen, child of God, God's favor is enough for you. Now, wife, wives, listen, understand God's favor. As long as you are faithful to God and you are trusting God, his favor will come. Amen. Whoever says amen, may it come. Amen. I repeat again, his favor will do what? So I believe this man was under pressure. He gets home, Rachel is asking him, you've served, you've served this man for 14 years just to have me. When will he have our own? This is not happening. When will we do all these things? So the, the fellow turns now to Laban. Now let's go to verse 27. 27, verse 27 says this. Now, but Laban said to him, this is what Laban said. He said, if I have found favor with you in, in, in your sight, I have learned, help me, by what? Divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. To signify to me, every man who has favor, God uses him to bless another. If you are born again, you are blessed. And if you are blessed, you are blessed to bless the place where you are. Bless your house, bless your community, bless your boss, bless your business. So Laban, though he was a, an idol worshiper, he had through divination understood. He understood from the day this young man walked in that house, things were never the same. He realized his flocks had multiplied. He realized things had changed. So he tells this man, I have learned by definition, divination, that it is you who has made me rich. So he went ahead and he began making a proposal. And look at the proposal in verse 29, verse 28. 28 says... Name your wages, and I will give you. Now it is Laban who is asking Jacob to name his wages again. And he's telling him, listen, I have now all these things that I have here. Now name your wages. You know, there are moments when favor comes upon you, your boss will ask you, what, what, how much money can I pay you? <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. It's only the worship team that heard me. How many of you would want your boss one day to tell you, Bana, you ni kama sisi tumetengeneza na wewe, unataka nikupatie nini? Check in the Bible. See, any man who was blessed by God, Abraham. Check in the Bible, Isaac. Check in the Bible, Esther. Check in the Bible, Ruth. Check in the Bible, David. You will find there was always an open check. And this happened when they waited upon God for favor to come upon them. So he says, name what you want. Now, this is a proposal that was an open check. And now Jacob goes home, I mean, comes to Laban, and he tells Laban, this is now what you will give to me. Now listen, this is what happened. Look at verse 29. 29 says, Jacob said to him, if you yourselves know how I have served you, and how your livestock has fared with me, verse 30, verse 30, which we have seen. I think verse 30, we have seen it. Let me just go to verse what? To verse 32. Can we go to verse 31? 31. We've seen, we saw verse 30. Let me, this was the, now their idea. Let me pass. He said, verse 31. And he said, what shall I give you? Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. If you will do this for me, I will again pasture your flock and keep it. Because he wanted now to begin working on that flock to earn his own money so that he can be able to have something that he can use to take his family with him back. So the man goes in verse 31. 32. Is it 31? 32, and he makes a proposal. And I want you to think about this proposal seriously. He said, allow me to pass through all your flock today. Removing from it every speckled. Can somebody say speckled? Yes. Number two, every what? Spotted sheep and every black lamp and the spotted and the, sp and, and the speckled among the goats. And they shall be my wages. Now, I like this one. I just love it. I'm, as, I'm assuming this, these are the flocks which Laban had. And indeed, you are sheep, all of you here. Okay? So these are the sheep that Laban had, all of you. And then Laban asks me, I'm now Jacob. He says, Jacob, name your wages. Then I tell Laban, this is, these are now going to be my wages. In this sheep that is here, there are some which are speckled. Speckled means they have got stripes. There are others which are black in color. And there are others which have spots in color. 
Those three, they are mine. The others which are white, white in color, one color, those ones will become yours. You know, if I'm given that opportunity and I'm the one who takes care of the sheep, how will I make that decision? I think that decision will come out of what I know that is among the sheep, isn't it? I will scan you and I will say, I'll tell Pastor Joyce who is Laban, I'll say, me, I want, I will look around like this and I will see where are the heavyweights. I will try to look at those who have money, those who, are, who can give tithe properly. Maybe that day I'll arrange for all the people who are managers to sit on this side. Then I'll tell Pastor Joyce, the ones sitting on this side are mine. And the ones on this side are yours. That is normal. That's what you will do. But look, Laban, after he had made that proposal, he has made the proposal. The man has now agreed with his brother or his, with, 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 with his boss that a half of what he has in terms of that, those colors belong to him and the rest are his. How many of you believe Laban gave him what he had asked for? Can I see your hand up? Because me, I believed that until last week. Can I see your, come on, are you people, do you read the Bible or do you think I'm testing you? How many of you think Laban did that? How many think, let me say not believe, how many think he did that? Can I, I'm trying to make it easier for everyone. How many think he did that? Pastor Joyce. Now, you know what I used to believe? This is what I used to believe. I used to believe Laban, when they agreed that way, okay, let, let's read the Bible. Can we read the Bible? Listen, it says this, verse 32. I mean 33. 33 says, and sorry, my time is up. So my honesty will, will answer for me later. When you come to look into my wages with you, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and the black among the lamps, if found with me, shall be counted stolen. So he said, after we have done this exercise, today, today, you will come and check in my flock. If you find in my flock anything that is not that is not clean like yours, then you know I have stolen from you. Then they agreed. Now, Jacob went to sleep, as usual, that night, hoping tomorrow the exercise will take place. Do you know what happened at night when they were sleeping? And this is where I want to end on this to tell you, favor is not given by man. It is only given by man when God has given it. I know you will tell me, but you talked about parental favor. Yes. What I'm telling you, I mean, what I'm saying, bless, not favor, blessings are not given by man. No man can make you rich. No man can make you have what you, have, you want. It is only God who can give you the promise that he has promised you. And especially in Kenya. You know, Kenya, the biggest problem we have in Kenya is lies. Wongo. That is the biggest sin that pastor should repent. That's the biggest sin that people of this nation should repent. Because we don't tell people the truth. To metenga, to meweka. <laughs> and even pastors now, they have begun doing the same. We promise the worship team we shall take you out. We never take them out. <laughs> you know, we promise we are going to do ABCD for you. We never do it. So we become liars. And many of us have the spirit of Laban. But I can tell you, if you are a man of God, even if they don't take you out, God will still take you out. Because God never lies. Am I saying the truth here? If you check in the Bible, look at this verse. And, and please allow me just to share this verse. Because I don't want to spoil my second, my third service. Look at verse, uh, can we, which verse do we go to, really? Look at verse 35. Look at verse 35. Verse 35 says, but that day, can somebody say that day? What happened on that day? Can you read with me? It says, Laban removed the male goats that were stripped and spotted and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, everyone that had white on it and every lamb that was black and put them in the charge of what? His sons. So many of you think Jacob inherited what he had demanded. No! No! The man sneaked into the flock at night with his sons and they picked whatever they had agreed with Jacob. That night, that very night, so that when Jacob wakes up in the morning, he will tell him, now look, all the flock is white. So now start taking care of the flock. And he did not only take them and give to the charge of his son. The man decided to hide them. Look at verse 36. 36 says, 
And he set a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob. How many days' journey? How far you, can you go between Nairobi for three days if we went on foot? Now, which place would that be? I'm imagining that could be Naivasha or where? Past Naivasha, where would it be? Probably Nakuru. The man went to Nakuru with the ship over three days. The Bible tells me between himself and Jacob, and Jacob remained to do what? To pasture the rest of Laban's flock. To tell me, Jacob decide, began on a clean plate. I can tell you, you can also begin on a clean plate, but God will bless you. Amen. When favor is upon you, you don't need anybody to do anything for you. Listen to me. When favor is upon you, you don't need anybody to give you for you to make it. You will see in my next sermon. With nothing... The man now became the richest man in that area. Beginning from zero. To signify to us, it is not what people give you that will make you. You know, we always say, I don't have money. Oh, I cannot begin my business because of this. Some are quick to say, I have no stock. Let me tell you, with stock or no stock, you will make it. You will make it. I have seen people with only two tomatoes on the street. At the end of the day, they are running a supermarket. Not because anybody gave them money, but because they believed in the Lord whom we believe. There are some of you who are seated here who were nothing. Nothing. When you, became, when you came to this church, I singled out two. I hope they're not offended in the first service. And I'm sure they can't be offended because they're my children. I singled out Jimmy. Jimmy came to a church just a young, a young man from college, nothing. Jimmy, am I speaking the truth? But Jimmy is somebody. He's not, when you look at him, he's a pastor, but he's not. Check his life. He's not. This man is a director. Rosemary came a small girl, comes China to Kadogo, primary school. Rosemary is true. But look at her now. She's a beautiful big woman, a director sitting somewhere else. Rosemary, is it you who has made yourself a God? Or Peter, you are so blessed. You would have never married her if she never had favor. <laughs> Some of us, if you look at our lives, it's just the favor of God. Allow me to finish by telling you this. You don't need anybody to do anything for you. When the favor of God is upon you, things will never be the same again. And for Jacob, when this happened, Jacob never took an offense. Jacob understood God had given him a promise he will be with him. He simply took the sheep which Laban had given to him and he said, from tomorrow, I will begin tending the sheep. I will give you the formulas he used when he began to multiply the sheep that next Sunday. But listen to me. This man ended up becoming the richest man. Listen, if you look at this scripture, the last scripture is saying this. It says this, verse 43. Verse 43. It says verse 43, if you can turn there. It says this. Please, verse 43. It ends by saying this. Media, quickly, verse 43. Chapter 30, verse 43, media. It says, thus, help me, what happened? The man did what? Increased greatly and had large flocks and had what? Female servants and had what? Male servants, help me. Camels and what? Donkeys. Somebody who had nothing left that land when he had increased greatly. That he became a, he became a great, great me, I believe he was the richest man when he was living that place. That's just five years after this incident that I'm talking about. The man left the place when he was a very rich man. And let me assure you, God will be with you. God will keep you. God will bless you. God will give you favor. And I'm telling you, it, it may not appear today like you have anything. But, but, the favor of God. The favor of men. And what the promise of God says will deliver to you what you are trusting God for. Let me leave it at that point. We'll pick it up next time. <laughs>